Ooh, okay, well, we're definitely going to have some reactions to all of this with you guys. Um, I, I can see that um, we're going to have to get him a lollipop or something because he is definitely pissed off. But I'm not going to say that he's got to be all pro defensive line. Cowboy Joe Boo, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. Man, it has been hard out here for a pimp. Um, this Dallas Cowboys team is going to be totally different than what we have gotten used to. Um, I don't know if you guys have noticed, but slowly but surely, the Dallas Cowboys have gotten rid of everything from the Jason Garrett era, with the exception of D-Law, Dak Prescott, and Zach Martin. We're down to three, I believe. I could be wrong on that, but I don't know who else is left from the Jason Garrett era. And now with the announcement that Tyron Smith, you have to know exactly what happened. The Cowboys basically low-balled Tyron Smith to say, you know what, we want you back, big fella, but, you know, we only want to play you a couple million dollars. And his agent basically said, we can get a lot more out on the free agent market. So he's gone. We know we have 16 free agents, and thus far, the Cowboys haven't even done anything to get themselves under the salary cap. And one of the things that the Cowboys typically do is they let their players go out into free agency and let them find a deal and then see, you know, if we can match it or if we can get you back. Remember that Washington had Amari Cooper over and we're just negotiating with him and then, you know, the Cowboys ended up signing him back. The question is, is this the beginning of a rebuild where the Cowboys are just saying, we're just going to start all over? Because at the moment, it doesn't seem like we're going to be bringing back too many players. The only ones I can think that we probably will will be Stephon Gilmore, who just got here, probably Jordan Lewis um, there. And we thought Tyron Smith was going to be one of those. Um, I don't see Biotis coming back. I don't see Dante Fowler. I don't see Dorrance Armstrong because they will command uh, great money. I don't see Navelle Callamore coming back. Which means... We're going to have a lot of guys who weren't here before that are now going to be here um, becoming Dallas Cowboys. And maybe, just maybe, this is an opportunity for the Cowboys to change the type of players and change the narrative of oh, Tony Pollard. I don't see him coming back as well. Uh, maybe Rico because he is a restricted free agent. But this is an opportunity that the Cowboys – need to be really looking forward. Now, I don't know what the plan is because Catboy and Jerry have not created any room. In case you didn't know, as we sit here today on Sunday, March the 3rd, that next Sunday begins free agent frenzy. Now, we're going to be live streaming all day because not that we'll be doing anything, but at least we'll be seeing what other teams will do. We see teams out there that have $100 million, and we're sitting here at minus $10.5 million. We're going to have to get players. Now, typically, Stephen Jones has said, basically, if you have to get free agents, it's because you messed up two or three years ago, and you have to overpay. Thank you, Captain Obvious. We have messed up. We have messed up. So... Is your thing we're not going to try and fix the problem because we messed up? We messed up last year in the draft. Let's be clear here. We got nothing out of that. Now, that's not to say that maybe we do get something out of this uh, draft. But from my mind, the way Stephen Jones goes about this is, you know, we're just going to get a bunch of bottom tier guys that only cost us a million or two piece. And we'll bring them in and, you know, we'll put them in there and we'll play them and, and so on. 
But I have to think that when you start thinking about all of the players that we bring in that are guys that have had shaded past, guys that are coming off injuries, guys that are elder statesmen and looking for their last go-round, that maybe instead of spending all of that money on those guys, that you look and say, I'm going to get one really good free agent. And I didn't say the top tier one, but get one real good one that's healthy and that's younger that may be able to stay longer. And maybe, just maybe, sometimes instead of us saying, we have to lock a guy in, we need to let them go and bring in a free agent to replace them. If you look at it, hindsight is twenty twenty. When Zeke Elliott was $18 million, maybe we've been better off signing two guys that were, you know, six or seven million at running back. Maybe instead of signing Michael Gallup to a $13 million deal coming off of a 455-yard season and having a tour ACL, that maybe we've been better suited going out and getting a legitimate number two wide receiver and spending that money on him. Because here's the thing. You've spent $26 million the last two seasons for not even 900 yards worth of production. And you will spend another $13 million this year. Well, they'll sell you, we'll save $9 million, but you're going to pay the other four the following year. You're basically going to spend another $13 million on Michael Gallup. So as we look at $39 million on Michael Gallup and have only 900 yards to show for it, maybe just maybe it'd been a better idea to have gotten a legitimate receiver and to have let him go. Now, of course, it's easy for me to talk about what they didn't do or the mistakes they made after the fact, but it seems like these are the same mistakes that we make over and over again. This is not new. You can go back to Marion Barber, who was a part-time running back, whose style does not give you longevity, but at the time they broke the bank for Marion Barber. You can go back to Miles Austin, who had an injury pass, tore hamstrings all the time, and they paid him too much and had dead money. This is a cycle that keeps repeating over and over and over again, and the Cowboys don't seem to learn. And it's amazing because a lot of times teams will go through like the Rams that built a team that won the Super Bowl, they go through and they let go player after player. They let go Namak and Sue. They let go, you know, trade, you know, Jalen Ramsey and things like that. And we look at the roster and we say they got the team. But that natural turnover got them to the playoffs and they went as far as we did. We constantly say we believe in our own guys. Well, one thing Bill Belichick, whether they won the Super Bowl or not, always turned over about a third of the roster to make people feel uncomfortable. And maybe, just maybe, that's what the Cowboys are trying to do now is trying to make people feel uncomfortable and bring in people to try and make them perform. So that's where we are right now. This is going to be a dramatically different team than what we've been used to. And maybe, just maybe, Some people will have a different attitude. Rich Eisen, advice for the Joneses. We all have advice for them. Let's listen to them before we get out of here. I'll give you dealer's choice, TJ Jefferson. We've got two stories left to cover. Okay. Sean Payton on the Denver Broncos quarterback situation. Oh, that's interesting. Stephen Jones being asked, what did your dad mean by going all in? Get your damn act together. Well, you know, I'd have to say, let's go with the dad story. Here we go. Touch the heartstrings a little bit. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. go. Jerry Jones had this to say in the Senior Bowl in Alabama. He's like, we're going all in. Yeah, baby. We're going all in on players that you wouldn't normally think we'd go all in on. We're like, what the hell does that mean? Like a run stopper? Like what? Like like a baseball player? Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. What do you mean? The Cowboys go on football players. You know what I mean? They go all in on it. They go half in, but they just dip a toe in the pool? Of course not. But he says, we're going all in. We're going to be all in all the way to the end of the season. What the hell does that mean? Does that mean Derrick Henry? Does that mean you're going in free agency in places that you normally don't go? Because I say that's where it should be. 
Stephen Jones was asked this question today. I have not heard the answer. I'm keen to hear it myself. Hit play, please. I've never known Jerry not to be all in in any <laughs> given year. But, uh, uh, you know, you, you know, certainly, uh, you know, we've got a great, I think, a great team put together. Uh, you, know, I think, you know, the last three years, uh, won a lot of football games. I think uh, 36. And, uh, you know, certainly uh, where we have to improve is the postseason. You know, we're going to get the right kind of guys who step up and make big plays in the postseason. It's been a challenge in terms of our success there, and uh, that's where we have to improve. Are there any answers that you that you guys have kind of come up with as to what's you know, going on? A, you know, we're taking a holistic view of this thing, and we'll continue to look at it. Uh, obviously, uh, being here at the Combine is going to be, you know, a great time to spend some time in terms of looking not only at the uh, young players that are going to be out there, but just spending time, you know, together. Uh, internally spending a lot of time talking about, uh, you know, what we have to get accomplished, we think, in order to uh, take the next step. Holistic view. Or did they go in a darkness retreat okay. to make these decisions? Is that what he means by that? Or does he mean by, uh, like, the hole? They're taking those. Like, what are they doing? They dug a hole, he sat and, in it. He and the Joneses, they went into their looking, own little looking, Frisco darkness retreat. Little looking, little looking for wins. Frisco Waska in their tea. Is that what it is? <laughs> Here, coach. <laughs> Frisco, I mean, <laughs> I want you to want to give an answer at some point. Just when when I don't want to give an answer, you know, we're we're taking a half listic view of this thing. Yeah, that's more yeah. like the Cowboys. Half listic. You think they have like a yurt? With a, with a oh star? yes, a yurt. A yurt. Yeah. Whoa, a yurt. we've got a yurt. A yurt on the, on the, on I like it. Yeah. It's the first yurt reference. On it's the, just the, things that my people tell me. Brought to you by Dodge. Mike McCarthy, three straight years of 12 and 5. Oh, dude. That's nice. Two words. They are Derek Henry ripped the knob off. They're not paying Pollard 12 million bucks for what they got last year. And Uncle Rico Dowdle (laughs) ain't the bell cow. I don't believe. I shouldn't ever say this guy can't. The He's NFL. Nice, you should never say that about an NFL player. You can't. You never know. Correct. Never know. But I saw episode one of this Dynasty series. I heard about You know, it. Uh, about the Patriots. Yeah, you never know. Yeah, That's never basically know. the general yeah. gist. <laughs> hey, Derrick Henry, go get him. Star inside of the helmet. Run him. And we run him that. down everybody's throats. Mm-hmm. And play action off of that and get CeeDee Lamb going there and get... Gallup going there. You know? Speaking of run. Get the, Cooks going there. The bigger problem is getting someone to stop the run. That's another one. They, that they, is, they, they can be available be in the, the draft. Priority. I know. That, so, so do yeah, that too. Draft. Go yeah. all in. That's what it means. That's the holistic approach. There you go. We need a big body in there. There you go. What's in Did you learn it? Doing? Uh, by the way. They do need Not a, a bad idea. Uh, even though he didn't play last year. Does that uh, answer satisfy you? I guess. <laughs> I give you ten and a half cowboy wins next year. Over. Oh. Ooh. Yeah, I mean, come on. We're we gonna win games. Come on, though. man. What are they it's gonna marvelous. go? Marvelous. They're gonna go ten and seven. They're they're still a very good football team in the regular season. Washington will better. Okay, you good. think the Giants will be better? What do you think? They're nine and eight? Get like, out of here. It's like every year when I predict the Cowboys oh. schedule or their, their win loss record, YouTube like just destroys me, like it's how crazy. dumb I am. I and think then, eleven and six is a very reasonable it, it, very it reasonable floor about 11 for the Dallas six. Cowboys. Yeah. I'm going all in on it. I'm taking a holistic approach. Oh Lordy Rich. Okay, yeah. Rich. Going all in on it. I don't know what the Cowboys are doing. I honestly don't. I wish I did, but it's it's just not looking good if you're a Cowboy fan right now. All right, good people. I've got to get up to Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, so we can get that bathroom together. We'll be live streaming from there at 5 o'clock Eastern. I hope you all tune in and join us, and I will see you soon. Peace.